Hello, I'm Demis Helen and welcome back to the Melodic Techno series. This is episode number three, where we're going to take a look at the Atmos and how I created some of the Atmoses using time stretching in Cubase. To kickstart the Atmos, we're going to take a look at the three layers that compromise the Atmos. And technically, this vocal line at the bottom also constitutes as part of the Atmos layers. But we'll look at that at the end because it is uh, sort of copying what we're doing here with the effects. So as you'll see in the first episode, we looked at the lead ARP, which started the whole idea of this track off. Very simple and has a lot of delay and a bit of reverb on there to sort of give it a space and positioning in the mix. But we have two different types of Atmos in here, but following the same premise of those notes in that sequence. The first one is our counter melody, uh, which can be called the call and answer. So you have the melody and then it's like the question and then this is the answer in the Atmos. So it's sort of in the background. And what I'm going to do is I've just put a limiter on here to turn up this level so you can hear this a little bit better for now. And then we have these two stretch atmoses down here. So I'll just mute these. That should be muted anyway. So you can hear there's a lot of ringing texture in there. It just fills the left and right spaces. And I'm going to show you how I've done that. So it all starts with this counter melody here. So let's just have that one. Let's just loop this. So if we open up the left panel, we can see we've just got a few effects. Now, if we look in here, it's just the M Tech Lead 1. So it's exactly the same as the lead that I used in the Leads and ARP video. So let's explain what is going on with my signal path. So if we look at this, we've got some compression. That is really sort of like a harsh threshold, low ratio there. But it's really just to squash the peaks and smooth out the sound before we begin processing. Because I want this to be Atmos. We don't really want to bring too much attention to it in the mix. So let's keep it smooth. And you can see that we have room works and then we have stereo delay. So the stereo delay comes after for the reason that I want the washed out sound of the reverb to be then echoed to sort of enhance the decay time of the reverb. So the reverb on its own is not at all big enough for me. You could layer a second reverb on top if you wanted to, but a much quicker and sort of more clearer way is to add some stereo delay. So let's take the stereo delay off. The dual filter is just for high pass and low passing as usual, so we don't need to do anything with that. But this room works here is set to 20 seconds, the max it can be. Large size, long diffusion. We got the mix set at 100% and then we just got the lows rolled out on the inputs and dampening. So that creates a nice long lush reverb. But you can see there's a lot of decay there and there's not a lot of clarity in terms of the tonal quality of that sound. But what we can do is add in the stereo delay. So we've got full feedback on quarter notes and quarter dotted. That's what suited this pace for the track. And again, I've rolled off the lows, but also the highs on each channel. And that is creating essentially a band pass for the mid frequencies. So it's really between 600 hertz and 10K, let's say. So that keeps control so it's not too bright and it's not too deep um, and not getting in the way of our kick and bass. And when you add this in, this is going to extend the reverb and make it sound like really we haven't added delay on. So you can hear at that point the reverb's gone but the delay gives the illusion that it's continuing. So very, very simple technique, nothing too special there, but very effective nonetheless. But where this comes into its own is taking that exact same sequence of notes, and if we just scroll along to here later on in the track, I created this section. Now, if we just solo this on its own, 
exactly the same notes with a lot of delay, or should we say decay, on there, so it gives a nice long ringing bell sound. And this is a more sort of bell sound. If we look at Retrolog, this is a sine wave going through a low pass 24 with a full envelope mix. And then you can see I've just shaped it up using the amp and filter envelopes. No effects at all on this. But where it comes into its own is we've put compression and reverb on here. So smoothing out the sound again, and then room works with the same settings pretty much as what I've used just on that counter Atmos. Nice long setting, no delay on that one. You can see I experimented with it, but it was a direct copy, but um, it didn't fit with what I wanted to do. But that doesn't matter because I'm going to show you what I did here to create these two. So this is actually muted in the track. So if we was to look at this, you can see it's muted, but it's there for reference so I can show you what I was doing. So with what I did here is these are time stretched and you can see stretched Atmos is written in the title. This is this sound, this bell sound, but time stretched to two different lengths and then hard panned left and right. So if we bring up the mixer, you can see my two Atmoses here and you can see one is left and one is right. So the first thing that I did here is render in place. So this is a feature where we can turn this into an audio sample based on the selection and what tracks we have soloed. So we just have this one soloed. If we right click, and if you're on Mac, you can hold Alt. You can see here we've got render in place. And you've got two options, render with the current settings and the render settings. So I'm going to click render settings to show you what I've got. I'm using a complete signal path, so it includes my compression and room works in there. I've got it set to seconds on the tail mode, but we've actually got it set to zero because I didn't need a tail because it's never going to reach the end. But if you are wanting to use this to the very end and then repeat it, I would advise having a tail on there so it doesn't just sound like it's cutting off, especially when you've got lots of reverb and delay. You can name it with a custom name down here. And then when we click render, so I'm just going to call this test. This will create an audio file of this MIDI. In fact, it won't because it is muted. Let's just try that again. So now I can just go to render in place with current settings. And you can see now if you just mute the MIDI, we've got our audio file. So if you're wondering why this is really loud, I've just put on a limiter on the end of my channel here and just boosted it so you can hear what is going on. And um, that's why we can hear it so clear. So we've now got a audio version of our MIDI. So we can mute the MIDI and we can just focus on our stretching. So we have a couple of options for stretching. You can get really nitty and gritty, or you can just do a really quick shortcut way, which is the way I did for this one. But I'll show you the long way first. If we right click again, Alt on Mac, we can go to processes and time stretch. And this will give you all the options that you need to define how long you want it to be, uh, what algorithm you want to use and etc. So you can have a little bit more control over your sound. But the quicker way to do this, and um, let's just undo that because we didn't want to apply it, is if you go up to your toolbar menu, you can click sizing applies time stretch on your arrow. And then when you drag this, you'll drag the length of this and it will time stretch it according to where you've let go. So for example, you can see down here, one is time stretched longer and one shorter. If you can just about see that on there, these are very quiet waveforms, but one ends about here and the other one ends about here. So you can see this one's longer, this one's shorter. So this one, for example, is if we double its length, we've doubled the length of the sample as opposed to this. So that one I did like this. And you can see that's roughly what we've got on this one. And then the other one was extended by another quarter. So instead of doubling that again to double the size, I just added a quarter extra length. And that one was like that. And hard left, hard right, you get a nice blend of these sounds together um, coming from different ears.
And because they're operating at different times, you get the notes coming in at different times and that gives you different ear spacing on your sound and it just gives you a nice sense of width in the mix. And that is a really good way to get that sort of sinking into the mix and giving you a nice atmosphere layer by doubling up all the simple elements of your track to create atmospheres. And then finally on the Atmos mix, some EQ and some compression. The compressor is squashing down the sounds combined, so it'll bring out all of the reverbs more and the atmos of the sound. So squashing those peaks down is gonna give way to the quieter sounds down below, giving the illusion that they are being raised up in volume. And then on frequency, we're just controlling the lows to make sure there's no conflict with our lows and sort of lower mids. Um, so it just provides a nice floaty feeling in the track. Now, if we take a listen to the Atmos, and then I will sort of get rid of the Atmos halfway through. So let's just do this part of the track. If I just unmute and mute the Atmos, you'll hear how much of an effect it has on the track. You can hear how much of an effect it has on it. You're going to hear it a lot clearer, a lot more like more dominant because we've been focusing all the sound design and you so obviously have it imprinted into your mind, but it is there to be sort of subtle in the background. So there we have it. That is the end of the video. Hopefully you've got some new tips and tricks there to use in your own Atmos. You can see how simple they were, just using elements out of the track. That doubles down on keeping the same tonal quality throughout the mix because you're using the same sounds and the same notes, but you're just extending them with various tools to make them sound more atmospheric. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. I've been Demis Helen, and I will look forward to seeing you in the final episode where we're going to look at how this track was mixed using Cubase plugins. So thanks for watching. Take care.